Sheltered by an ancient landmass forged by volcanoes, lies a hidden underwater world. This environment is regulated by its own rules. A junction of pathways where travelers arrive and others leave. Some will eventually put down roots in this hostile blue expanse. Lost in the endless immensity of the ocean, these nutrient-rich waters around the Canary Islands attract a huge variety of life. And this is where a small pod of short-finned pilot whales choose to rest after a long journey from the southern waters. The Canary Islands are sheltered by a mild climate, protected from any extremes of weather. But high up on the towering mountains, the conditions can turn treacherous. In winter, water is released by high altitude storms and fertilized by nutrients washed from the soil. As this drains into the sea, a large-scale ecological chain reaction is unleashed. These weather cycles help to sustain all life in the region. Life for the local marine inhabitants is dictated by constant renewal and replenishment, affecting them in different ways. Some will move in groups, united by their own language and close blood relations. This is the Isauropod, one of the world's largest resident populations of short-finned pilot whales. Known as the cheetahs of the deep for their ability to dive to depths of hundreds of meters at high speed, they swim in well-defined areas and follow their own agenda. They hunt squid in pitch darkness and look out for each other, sharing parental duties and passing on their experience to younger pod members. For the next few months, these waters will be their home. other species in the area, different strategies need to be adopted. The cuttlefish have already decided it is time to spread new life, even if it means their own death. These are days of madness, frenetic dances and passionate embraces, exhausting them and inevitably driving them towards their doom. Winter darkness is long under the sea, and as waters remain cold, temporary environments flourish. Alerted by their biological clock, strange creatures turn up looking for company, food, or a bit of everything. Sea robins have patented a useful multi-purpose tool for life between sand and mud. Their front pectoral fins are thin limbs they use to scan the seabed in search of crustaceans and other small buried prey. They also use them as crutches or even to handle objects. 
they use their dorsal fins to maneuver skillfully. The harmless appearance of the John Dory hides what is a voracious predator of invertebrates and small fish. It has the ability to thrust its jaws forward with amazing speed. Propelled by its muscular tail, an angel shark goes out on patrol, while another one waits for the right moment to deal an unexpected blow in the quicksand. The changeable flow of ocean currents surrounding these waters also bring in waves of jellyfish. Some of them, like flickering alien ships, flow gently and display their amazing beauty. Dozens of them comb the waters hunting smaller jellyfish and the tiny creatures which make up the zooplankton. These fragile organisms also offer shelter to a wide range of ocean squatters. Some smaller fish resort to a rather unconventional but successful camouflage. They hide among the stings a protective barrier that intimidates potential enemies. It works. Nobody would dare to bother the fish in this wasp's nest. Adults can reach up to a meter in length at maturity, and they live close to the seabed, remaining safe in the predator-infested waters. web of hunters and prey, the short-finned pilot whales follow their own course. Large squid are their preferred food source, and the best feeding grounds lie a thousand meters deep. But they spend most of their time at the surface, dealing with their complex social agenda. The basic working unit is the pod, and this will set the agenda day by day. The clan is composed of 15 members, and each one is actively in charge of a task. Isora is the leader and matriarch. She rules the roost in one of the largest resident pods between Tenerife and La Gomera. The waters of the Canary Islands are a favorite location for pilot whales plowing through the waters on this side of the Atlantic, between Cape Verde and the Azores. Several females and their offspring form the hard core of this complex society. All the main family members are related to the mother. Males in the pod also play a role, but not in reproduction as they are blood relatives. their vow of chastity, males ensure the protection of newborns and juveniles, a long-term investment which is crucial for pod survival. They stand out with their large size, more than five meters long and almost twice as heavy as the females. They are an intimidating sight. 
they are recognizable from far away by the development of the dorsal muscle structure and the broad fin standing out on their trunk. They are the guardians and will not allow any intruding outsider. In this cooperative marine mammal society, physical contact strengthens the bonds. It is excellent preparation for the countless challenges they will be confronted with during their lifetime. Lacking in sophisticated equipment, a sonar, hidden under their bulbous forehead, picks up the sound from hundreds of echoes, generating in their mind real-time images of everything surrounding them. It is high technology which has evolved over thousands of years. Turtles are solitary sailors. Those that frequent canary waters were not born here. This temporary visitor will eventually return to the remote tropical beaches where it first opened its eyes. It must grow up and put on weight and therefore needs to find the resources to do this. The past months have brought an unexpected bounty of food. The sea has scattered Portuguese man-o-war, leaving them exposed and swaying in the currents. They will be the turtle's main source of food for the next few weeks. Aided by the wind, the jellyfish disperse, offering long-awaited shelters to a variety of species. This toxic mass will strike down anyone getting too close with powerful venom. Young pompanos grow up fast. A home established some time ago is now becoming too small, and moving on is inevitable. A turtle sometimes becomes the makeshift transportation up to one of the many objects floating on the surface, washed out by storms. These drifting objects are lifeboats for many ocean inhabitants. Juvenile sea breams, pompanos, triggerfish. The list of tenants is long. The demand is great, although your turn on board cannot be guaranteed. Any sign of shade is of vital importance. Being exposed in the open water, either from underneath or from above, is foolhardy. Everything is geared to finding an adequate home that fits. Winter eventually comes to an end, even in the deep blue depths of the ocean. Spring is coming to reconquer the ocean. After several months wandering around Central American coastal waters, Cora's sheer waters have flown right across the vast expanse of the Atlantic. Thousands of kilometers for a reunion, with a return ticket that would expire in seven months' time. The deadline does not permit the slightest delay, and they are all on a quest to find a partner and achieve successful breeding. Common 
dolphins, resident from November to May, launch highly synchronized attacks against shoals of long-spined snipefish. The dolphins use a subtle hunting strategy that relies on cooperation and leaves few options for escape. The dolphins harass the snipefish, and death will come swiftly for them. Atlantic spotted dolphins also join in the assault. They are common in these waters and instigate a reign of terror in the coastal shallows. This is the perfect moment for Cora's shearwaters to build up strength and get their share of the spoils. They are expert swimmers underwater and pick off their victims with great agility. Some of them pay the ultimate price for such a demanding trip. But even death will be worth something to somebody. As in other highly advanced creatures, communication among short-finned pilot whales is constant. Each group has its own dialect, and this is how they coordinate their movements. Living in such a demanding society causes some members to be highly strung and agitated. And there is nothing better than physical contact, caresses and cuddles to calm them down. Playing is an important part of the process and everyone gets involved as long as their responsibilities allow them to. Some seem to get on better than others. These relationships emerge from the daily routine and turn into healthy, long-lasting friendships. The green turtles wandering around these waters are juveniles and their arrival is coordinated en masse after riding thousands of miles of ocean currents. The main concern of these solitary nomads is staying alive and growing up. And this means satisfying vegetarian stomachs. The turtle sets its course for a favored spot in sheltered and shallow waters, a seagrass bed. The submerged grass meadow has grown quickly with the lengthening daylight hours. This underwater haven is essential for the renewal of life, a unique but seriously threatened ecosystem. anchor the seagrass, making up a garden that provides shelter and sustenance to an endless number of visitors. Seagrass leaves are a good hiding place for those who rely on mimicry to stay alive. The leaves work at full capacity as a kindergarten for fish and invertebrate juveniles. Cuttlefish find excellent hunting grounds here, while Mediterranean parrotfish rest in makeshift and temporary shelters. The 
green turtle would not abandon an orchard that offers all it needs, but its inner clock will eventually force it to return to the remote beaches from where it once left. Each island also hides its own landscapes, sometimes contrasting greatly with the opposite island, even though they are close to each other. Underwater caves provide a crystal clear refuge where time seems to stand still. There is neither winter nor summer here. Nothing distinguishes one month from the previous one or the one to come. Millions of years of history are etched like mosaics in the stone. They are hiding places for the golden coral shrimp or the reef lobster, both of which are becoming scarcer every day. Meanwhile, the short-finned pilot whale pods keep moving to the rhythm set by their prey. The continual comings and goings of pod members give plenty of opportunities for them to exchange familiar glances with each other. Some other animals, similar looking but smaller than pilot whales, have also made their way up to the area. These are Risso's dolphins. Adults have their bodies covered in strange tattoos. Scars that once healed have not recovered their color, a feature almost exclusive to these creatures. Their real meaning remains one of the many mysteries surrounding this rarely seen species. They too have chosen the Canary Islands as their residence, but in more exposed waters up north. Risso's dolphins take advantage of two environments, the open sea in search of fish and squid, and the coast, getting as close as a few meters from the shore, tracking octopus and cuttlefish. Meanwhile, on land, summertime has already baked the soil leaving a devastating trail of dryness throughout the countryside. Up on the cliffs, the greenness vanished several weeks ago, and times are hard for Tenerife speckled lizards. Food is running short, except for cacti and ballos. Their appearance provides welcome sustenance for the lizards in the peak of the summer. They need to scatter their fruits urgently and at a safe distance for new plants to germinate. The trade winds arrive from the North Atlantic, invigorating the emerald belt of the islands. The mysterious and ancient forests survive wrapped in the constant humidity generated by winds coming from the distant north. These winds are a colossal driving force which accelerate ocean currents at the surface, channeled between immense masses of volcanic rock. Turbulent waters stir up the seabed, releasing deep nutrients and chlorophyll the pigment that processes solar energy.
This rings the dinner bell and unleashes a fresh round of activity. Manna from the ocean has arrived, which all species need to take advantage of. Schools of small pelagic fish fatten up, wreaking havoc on the plankton, before swimming into mortal ambushes laid by skipjack tuna. These robust and lean missiles, weighing as much as 20 kilos, are one of the migratory tuners that multiply in the summer months here. The feeding frenzy which ensues is violent and merciless. undertaking in an environment deprived of hiding places. Triggerfish take advantage of floating objects to conquer new horizons. They do not mind about their origin, just about the safety they provide. Once the territory is claimed, they feed on goose barnacles and crabs, passengers on the same boat. At the mercy of the currents, these incredible travelers have been able to reach the most remote oceanic islands. Pompanas also drift to the surface during their juvenile stage, an essential step before their descent to the great depths, which will become their normal habitat for the remainder of their lives. The summer rise in water temperature also attracts species from more tropical climes. Pelagic migratory fish like the mahi-mahi sprint in from the blue as they follow shoals of smaller fish, pushing them up north. They in turn are harassed by rough-toothed dolphins. The islands form a barricade that slows down their progress. They continue to arrive in a series of small groups that gather until they form megapods. The way they swim is original and unmistakable. In close lines, almost elbow to elbow, just like a light cavalry charge, emitting noises like a customized bugle. as enormous funnels that also drag in other impressive creatures from the open water. This young whale shark, an ocean migrant, will grow to 15 meters and weigh 20 tons. Although it is a monster, it is a harmless filter feeder, able to detect plankton concentrations from large distances. Other traveling companions, such as pilotfish and remoras, take advantage of its large size. For the past 70 million years of evolution, it has been one of the largest vertebrates on the planet, weighing as much as the largest dinosaurs of the time. Whale sharks have been known to live up to 100 years. But other, less welcome visitors from the modern age are also present in these waters. They are neither jellyfish nor squid, and certainly not edible. These sinister creatures are turning the oceans into immense sewers.
the curious, and those who simply enjoy playing have a range of new objects with which to amuse themselves. But at what cost? The turtle also trusted appearances and could pay a high price for it. What seemed like a comfortable shelter ends up being the rope dragging it to the gallows, one of many innocent ocean inhabitants condemned to a slow and cruel death. Further south, in the calmer waters, another loggerhead turtle, unaware of this drama, is resting peacefully while regulating its body temperature under the summer sun. In its shadow, some new tenants of warmer origins, such as pilot fish, have arrived. The Planes minutus crab is a faithful host. This itinerant microworld, providing shelter and food, is its permanent home. For the turtle, it is time to take stock of the situation. It has been drifting since it had a memory, and in spite of being comfortable for the moment, its final destination is still very far from here. Like many others, it has made its way from the beaches of Florida or the Cape Verde Islands further south, where it will have to return. That could mean wandering around for years and thousands of nautical miles, Putting down roots in this vast, three-dimensional and borderless universe seems like a pointless exercise. But for the pilot whales, these waters are probably the center of a larger living space that embraces other archipelagos. Islands like Tenerife and La Gomera seem to cast a magic spell on many pods, like the Isora. The stillness invites them to rest, and many succumb to the temptation. Some breathe with an accelerated rhythm, the symptom of a failed hunting attempt. They return empty-handed from their forays down to the depths, and now they need to get their strength back. Not far from the coast, the water quickly becomes very deep, and marine legends like the giant squid rule in the inky blackness. They are the main food source for short-finned pilot whales. The hand-to-hand -hand combat often leads to a slow death for the squid. Some will come out badly mutilated, The current slowly return them to the surface, where they will serve as bait or to offer some shade. Although dead, this one seems to be in perfect condition. Its retina might have registered one last frightening view of its attacker. During the summer, the sedentary life of the short-finned pilot whales increases, leaving them almost motionless for long periods. They have completed their mating rituals, and a new chapter in their lives, one of responsibility, begins. remaining by their mothers bear marks identifying them as newborns. 
They are fetal folds, wrinkles remaining from all the months restrained inside the mother's womb. They are clumsy and defenseless. They were conceived almost a year ago when resident pods, such as the Isora, received the visits of males from other groups. They made their way here, attracted by the food, and by something much more comforting, putting an end to their celibacy. They might have only swum together with their new partners for a couple of days, but this was time enough to pass on their genetic heritage. Now priorities have changed. Calves need protection and milk. Their mothers, the raw material to produce it. The problem is how to get it, 1,000 meters deep. And there are no possible shortcuts. It is like looking for a needle in a haystack. They have less than half an hour to go straight down, hunt and go back up. If they fail, they will have to regain their breath and repeat the maneuver, all in a few minutes. But they are wonders of evolution. Five meters long, weighing almost three tons, and able to reach 30 kilometers per hour holding their breath. Their powerful tails drive them down. The summer is moving on and the trade winds have grown stronger increasing the arrival of nutrients and along with them the fertility of this watery soup. The experienced Atlantic spotted dolphins are quick to move in. Compared to their coastal continental relatives from Africa and America, these mammals are smaller but the differences are deeper than that. They live exclusively in the oceanic waters of the Macaronesian archipelago. Their paleness is an evolutionary improvement that helps blur their silhouettes, protecting them from shark attack. It also confuses their prey, making them easier to catch. The pilot whales concentrate on tackling more pressing issues. The arrival of the calves requires a reorganization of the pod structure and the need to reinforce hierarchies. In this matriarchal society, females will give birth to up to eight calves, separated by several years, with the periods between births increasing with age. Once done, they will have fulfilled an important mandate, to procreate. But the stages before and after also have their importance. During their childhood, they were free of any duty and sheltered under the protection of their mother or other females during their mother's long and frequent absences.
Some reached adolescence still being comfortably circled, but it is now time for them to play their part. They will hunt in the abyss, and this requires full mental and physical training. They need to learn from the wise and experienced. This summer, Isora gave birth for the last time. From now on, she will be sterile. A hormonal cocktail inhibiting ovulation will run through her blood. She has entered menopause. While in other societies she would be condemned to exile, in this one, a crucial role has been reserved for her. She will take care of the calves while their mothers risk their lives, providing them with milk. Over time, she has compiled a detailed inventory of the ocean floor. She has been able to store the cartography of these hidden landscapes in her memory, a detailed map of the best feeding grounds and the places to avoid Now she has come full circle. Her mission will be to share the experiences she has gained. With time, one of her daughters may take control of the pod, or she could even start one of her own. The females are and will always be the backbone of the pod. But even in the most successful societies, unexpected events can cause extreme grief and heartache. A calf has died, and with it vanishes a long and costly investment. A male remains by its side for several days, attempting the impossible. But there is no way back. Well into the summer, the mahi-mahi have grown. Natural selection has done its work, and only one meter long solitary veterans have survived. They constantly circle a floating log, waiting for a chance to strike at smaller fish, which are using it as protection. As the sun sets, a starfish releases its sperm so it can be taken away more easily by the currents and find eggs willing to be fertilized. The oversized eyes of the Atlantic bobtail enables it to get close to swimming crustaceans. This cuttlefish species could also attract them with the cold light itself produces through a chemical reaction. It is only two centimeters long, but an efficient killer all the same. As autumn approaches, a large bride's whale arrives on the scene. Its main focus is on the schools of small fish that it is tracking. 
the lives of these solitary swimmers remain shrouded in mystery. Nobody knows exactly where they come from and where they go. At the end of October, Cora's shearwaters are starting to make a move, driven by hunger. Their offspring have not eaten for several days. The tense atmosphere does not promote friendship. For many novices, it will be the first and the last time they cross the Atlantic. Only the best prepared will make it through the huge expanse of water, but staying where they are is not an option. With the first gusts of winter, the thin layer of water bathed in sun hides a vacant underwater desert. Isora and her entourage break the surface. They are part of a legacy that dates back millennia, when their ancestors found a shelter among the masses of volcanic rocks rising from the ocean floor. The Canary Islands are just one of many archipelagos spread out over the face of the planet. But as we have seen, the conditions here support a unique ecosystem. They provide a haven for advanced matriarchal societies like the Isauropod, enabling them to develop and flourish. Shy Blanville's beaked whales also emerge from the depths, snatching a quick breath before vanishing again like ghosts. This is the daily routine for all these deep sea divers as they exploit their distant feeding grounds hidden in the abyss. These waters have become a real sanctuary of world relevance for marine mammals, where about 30 species have been identified so far. A crossroads for the agile dolphins and other permanent residents, or those paying a fleeting visit. In years to come, Isora will be but a vague memory, but her most valuable inheritance will have been passed on. Her offspring will continue the legacy of these supreme marine hunters, the cheetahs of the deep. <laughs>